from the home of the world's greatest harness action. This is Track Talk at the Big M. Hey, did you know that Richard Silverman, 13 years between Breeders' Crown victories, it certainly was unlucky for Richard, 1986 at Garden State Park with the three-legged masquerade and then with the three-year-old Tiberwood in Canada. Richard Silverman burst upon the scene here in 84 and 85 on the Meadowland circuit. Richard, congratulations on your uh, Meadowland success this year and uh, your great career. But take us back to when you first started here, uh, 84, 85. You were uh, quite a young guy in those days. and uh, you could, how, did, how did you wind up fitting in? Uh, well, I was just really lucky enough, Bob, to have the quality horses uh, of my father's to drive. And uh, at that time, I really just took advantage of uh, the opportunity. Yeah, but you're driving here against the best in the world. Uh, how was that driving against the Campbell and the Downs of the world? And you only had you know, a couple hundred drives under your belt. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was tough. I, I really didn't think about it at the time, and I just went about and my talent took me where I had to go at that time. What does a 20-year-old driver, Michael Jonathan, for a million three think before the race? And what were you thinking uh, in the stretch? I think you had to lead there for quite a bit, didn't you? Uh, it was a little pre-race jitters before, but uh, once the gate springs, you forget about everything. And uh, I really thought I had that race won, and I believe grade one just caught me on the outside. Okay, this is, we'll take a look here at Michael Jonathan, the 1985 Wilson. I mean, big, big money in those days. And Wilson, of course, was big every year, but Richard only had a, a bunch of drives. I remember Ombro Desire was one of your first wins a year before here. Tell, take us through uh, this part of the partial of the race. Well, I really thought we, Dad and I thought we were the best going in, and uh, we cut it. And uh, he just got a little tired late, and on the far outside, I believe it was grade one, uh, just caught us. Uh, on the far outside, I believe Lee Barlio uh, trained him that year. Richard, in those days, a lot of those two rolls didn't come back as three rolls, uh, with the exception of the Niatros and Annihilators. What about that? Were racing on two rolls a little too tough because of the money, you think? Or? Uh, I think without a doubt. You know, if you have an opportunity to make the money, you have to get it whenever you can. Uh, Di Leffen happened uh, to race in the Wilson, and then Dad uh, had given him a four to five week break after and brought him back at Lexington. So he had a little break in between where he didn't have to go to Canada and uh, race so tough the way they do now. So two year old, uh, you know, that mold was broken by uh, Di Laffin because he came back at three and had uh, another solid year. And that was kind of unusual at that point. Yes, it was. He was just a great horse. You can see right here. Now, Di Laffin, you can see some of his big wins back to back million dollar seasons. What was the best race that, uh, that Di Laffin had? Can you remember? Uh, the best race I would think, uh, even though I'd like to say to Wilson, uh, and I don't see it on there, was the Prix de Tay in uh, Montreal for me. Yeah, now you also defeated Precious Bunny in New Jersey Classic. Was that a case of you getting lucky? Or was that a, what was that story with that? You were on the lead there and you held on. I just got uh, away from Precious Bunny. John got caught in the back with him and uh, the wire just came up in time, really. Also, forgotten, I think, in some people with the great years that I laughing had, he's racing against not only Precious Bunny, but Arch Place, too. Yes, he did. And Arts Place and those kind of horses obviously made a lot of money too. So the money, you know, even though it was big money, he still had to go out there and earn it. And did you did you dodge those horses at all at any time? No, we raced against him every week, and uh, that was really, if you look at it, probably as good as crap as competitive three-year-olds as has been in a long time. Uh, Arts Place, uh, we beat him most of the time at three. He beat us uh, a lot of times at two. He seemed to. Uh, come back better as four than he was at three. What about, we know you, you do a lot of driving here, almost $26 million career. What about training and owning horses? What about that? Uh, I've had no luck owning, which I've uh, tried a little bit along the way. Uh, training uh, has been moderate. I'm now trying to help that out a little bit at the barn, and we've had a little success this year with our racehorses. The picnic in the park, uh, what's the story with him? Uh, he's in the, in the consolation for the North American Cup. Danielle Dubé is driving him for us uh, Saturday night. Okay, let's take a look at the quiz. The chance to win dinner for two here. We mentioned Di Laughing, the back-to-back million-dollar seasons. He's the last horse to do that. There are four horses who have done that. That's right, back-to-back million-dollar pacing seasons. We're leaving one of them out. Annihilator and on the road again did it 84-85. Can you name the other? Dinner for two on the line. Welcome back to Track Talk Live at the Big M. We welcome your calls or uh, emails as well. Uh, for Richard Silverman, our special guest, uh, we've got a question for him right off the bat here. Uh, it seems like you've been along for such a, uh, around for such a long time. Are you constantly trying to reinvent yourself? Uh, you know, you always try to really try to stay as sharp as possible. And uh, I think, you know, your talent's there and it's going to take you where you have to go, really. All right, we've got uh, a lot of calls for you. Bruce from Buffalo, New York. Go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, Richie, how you doing? Good, thanks, Bruce. L let me sneak in two quick questions. When you're, when you're driving four or five drives at the Meadowlands, let's say, how do you do pre-race strategy? Does publications like Sports Eye or the Racing Forum play any part in, in handicapping a race? And uh, my second question is, I was in the stands a few years ago in the two-year-old final when, when House of Fun just blasted out of there and you were sitting second and suddenly it made a break. 
was that the most disappointing moment of your dad's uh, life in your life as far as racing? Okay, the first uh, question is, uh, without a doubt, you know, you try to get, basically it's an idea of how the race is going to unfold looking at the uh, program and the sports side, but really at the Meadowlands, uh, things change so much when the gate springs, you have to adjust and go by feel of the race, uh, basically from that point on. Uh, the second question is, I don't know if it was the most disappointing thing, but it was very, very disappointing. We honestly thought we had uh, a very good shot to win that race, and it, ha it, it happened that we found out that uh, uh, House of Fun had a uh, disease called uh, EPM, which uh, affects the spinal cord in the, uh, in the horse, and we wound up fixing that up, and he really didn't come back at three, but he did come back to be a nice racehorse at four and five. Uh, EPM is treatable but not curable. Correct. Right. Uh, let's keep the calls going. Mel from San Rafael, California, watching us on TheBigUm.com. Yes, Richard, uh, I was very uh, concerned by your drive last year in the Meadowlands Pace, for which you were disqualified and suspended. Uh, you got Tiber Wood really hung out to drive from the three-hole in a 53-and-change half, and then at that point you interfered with other horses, and you also appeared to be using the whip. I mean, it looked to me like you were trying to intimidate other drivers with the whip, and I know you've been accused of that, and I'm just wondering if you've changed your tactics after last year's suspension. Well, I haven't changed my tactics at all, and uh, like I said, again, you know, I was the second choice going into that race. I was sitting fourth on the rail. A horse that uh, I had beaten about 11 out of 12 times was on the front, which Cat Manzi was driving. Uh, I thought it was the right move to try to quarter move on him and get to the front. It didn't work out. The horse wound up running in, and it was an interference call at that point. Well, here it is right here. You knew this was going to come up, uh, Richard, but uh, uh, you're heading down the back stretch, and uh, you're going to get parked out here. Yes, I am. Uh, again, you know, I was sitting fourth on the wood at the quarter pole. It's not a great place to be if you think you have a shot to win the race. I took a shot. Cat didn't want to let me go. And right here, I'm not going to just relinquish, you know, we're going for a million dollars. My horse run in, I got underneath Cat a little bit, and it caused a little confusion. Now, Richard, was there a uh, rivalry between the Tiberwood and the Gallup Blue Chip camp? Was that fact or fantasy? Uh, well, Mark Ford had made some comments uh, about my whip uh, concerning hitting Gallup Blue Chip in, in the face uh, a few times, which I, I can't tell you how many races I've driven. I've driven the same with my whip in the same spot every race. I've never had anybody complain about that before. Obviously, they fixed the problem with Gallup Blue Chip, and we haven't gotten tangled up in that position again. All right, let's move on. We've got an email question for you here. Of course, you can email us at tracktalk at njsei.com. Your family has done a great job with Picnic in the Park this year. You've mentioned that uh, he's in the North America Cup Constellation. How does he fit with the other three-year-olds, and who has impressed you the most this year? That is from uh, Todd from Howell, New Jersey. Well, uh, uh, Picnic really, I believe, is a very, very nice cult. I think he's he will, he's going to make some money for us. I think he has to really trip out against the best Colts, and he's probably one notch below the best right now. All right, we'll take a time out here. We've got lots more time and of here with our Richard biggest Sullivan. Day of the year, and our final day of the uh, current season is Hamiltonia Day, Saturday, August the uh, 4th. Uh, Bob, you got a question for Richard? Yeah, Richard's got, you've got family. It's not unusual for you to see your sister and your father training on the same card. Melissa Beckwith, your sister, and Jerry Silverman. How are they doing? Uh, very good. Uh, Dad's bond is doing well, and Melissa's bond is doing well. He, she races mostly at Yonkers, and her husband Mark drives, and so far things are working out well. All right, Richard, we've got some standbys on the line here. Greg from Ocean, uh, still uh, stung by the loss with the Pepsi Challenge a couple of weeks ago, right, Greg? Yeah, I am. Uh, but uh, he's come back and raced good in, uh, the, in the Classic Series final, so I'm pretty happy about that. Hi, Holly. Hi, Richie. Hey, um, my question, Richie, b pertains to the detention barn. We've seen a couple of big miles recently, C-Spot Runner Trotter in 53-2, and two, and uh, just last weekend, Lisa on Life in 148-1, a 50-claimer. Um, what is your opinion on the detention barn? Should it be held in every race? It's held in the, the major stakes, so... Uh, really, it's not, uh, you know, me being a driver, it's not as much as concerned as it is to other people. Uh, basically, I think, you know, uh, that it's a very hard question to answer, but I think that uh, the management in the Meadowlands uh, basically should, should keep it on. I don't think it should be blown up as much as it is or as it has been in the press and everything. And uh, I, to me, I think uh, a lot of horses do take true to form in and out of the detention barn. All right, Dan from Edison. We all know Dan. Dan, go ahead. Hi, guys. Uh, Richie, first off, uh, I want to thank you for a great job you've done with a recommendation at Freehold. And uh, my question is, can you elaborate a little bit about uh, Tiberwood at age two, compare and contrast him with Die Laughing at age two? 
You know, always uh, you hear those questions, and it's very hard to compare uh, each horse. Uh, Tiber Wood was a very small horse that a lot of times Gary Matches did an unbelievable job tripping him out and having him prepped just properly for uh, for the big races. And uh, Die Laughing really was, uh, you know, to me, Die Laughing is my favorite, and I think he was a better individual at two than Tiber Wood was. Richard, the, the two roles nowadays, it seems like the best two roles are coming back. Uh, as top three roles, only when they kind of peaked in the fall the year before. You know, the better slide and those kind of horses have seen to be coming back as opposed to the years past. Now with the Meadowlands maybe picking up some of those big races and having a fall me, you think that's going to play a factor? Uh, uh, I think it might, Bob. I think, you know, the Meadowlands is very hard on a horse o only because you never get to rest one here. Sometimes you go to other tracks, you'll be able to rest them a quarter, and it's not uh, the longevity, uh, longevity of a horse seems to last a little longer. It's going to be interesting to see. All right, Sam from Middletown, New Jersey. Go ahead, Sam. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. My question for uh, Mr. Silverman is, can you tell us, uh, Richie, how important chauffeurs are in this sport? And uh, you have... I lost them. We could... All right, let's go to an email question there. We kind of lost that. Uh, we, it was kind of inaudible there. Let's uh, check out the email question uh, that we have here from Keith from Verona, New Jersey. How important is post position at the metal lines? It seems that everyone hates the outside, but the stats show eight and nine do just as good as three and four. Is I that think, true? Uh, I think, again, you know, people have put more of uh, an emphasis on the driver and this and that. It's really... I would say 85% horse. So if you have a good horse with the 8-9 hole, I think you're going to win the race. All right. Very good. Let's uh, take a time out Welcome here. Back. We'll be back Let's go right to the quiz here. And, Bob, nobody answered it. Die Laughing, one of four pacers to have consecutive million-dollar season. Uh, seasons. Who's missing on this? Well, list? he did it in 88 and 89. And the year he won more money was not the year he was horse of the year. That was 1989. Matt Scooter, the 48-2 time, tri time trial in 1988 as a three-year-old. All right, well, if you missed that, you can come out here Friday and Saturday night. Bob has a quiz question each night, chance to win dinner for two here at the track. Let's go right to the phones now. Mike from Toronto, Canada. Mike, how's it going? Go ahead, Mike. You're on Track Talk Live. Oh, we lost Mike. All right, well, uh, how difficult is it when you're catch driving to offer an opinion on a horse to somebody else if you think the guy is interested in claiming the horse? Uh, it's a fine line, really, Ken. Uh, you just uh, you try to be as honest as you can without uh, getting too much into detail about the individual. All right, Tony from Brooklyn. Are you there, Tony? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, go ahead, Tony. Yeah, my question for Richie is, uh, I got a picture of Die laughing up on my wall when he went to Woodrow Wilson. Is it uh, customary for a driver to drive with one rein finishing, or, do you, or you should have two reins? It is, uh, you definitely should have two, and uh, that was probably maybe the first time and only time that I've ever done that and thank God I left and hung on the left line a little bit where it didn't affect him. What were you thinking top of the stretch in that race? You won by a nose last step, right? Yeah, I kind of forgot about the line. I was just worried about where the wire was. <laughs> All right, Anthony is on the line. Go ahead, Anthony. Uh, Anthony doing, from Caldwell. Yes, Mr. Children, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, my question is, um, do you think Magician is the best trotter in, horn in harness racing right now? Because obviously taking a backseat to Moneymaker the last few years she um, seems to be winning her races, but she's just like Please Act beat her a month back, and Victory Margin just got nosed out. That's my question. You know, any top horses get beat on any given day. Uh, without a doubt, I think he's the most dominant rider in the country, and I think he's going to go on and prove that as the year goes on. What about this Lyle Creek M, this horse from down under? How do, how do you think this horse is going to fare you know, here? You know, I've never seen him race. It's going to be very interesting, and I think it's great to see, uh, especially horses coming from all over to race against our horses here at the Meadowlands. Speed is of the utmost importance here at the Big M. How do you make speed in terms of equipment and shoeing? What goes into making speed? Well, it's a lot of different things, but basically it's really the horse itself. Can uh, You can do certain things. You put aluminum shoes so they grab the track. It's a lighter shoe. Uh, different bridle changes to get them a little bit more on the bit, uh, little things like that. Bikes, you know, the blackjack will make one go a little faster, I believe, than uh, a few other bikes. But generally, it's basically the horse. Three live drives tonight. Let's take a look. Shuffle the cards at 5-2. to two. Bold pink coming off a win. And uh, Marty.com, what do you think? Uh, shuffle the cards has been unbelievable the last few weeks. If he keeps his form going, I think he's got a great shot. Bold pink is in the same class but uh, is stepping against a little better man. She's uh, acting very well. I think she has a great shot. And Marty.com is, uh, is, is racing great, and Brett's done a great job with him. All three coming off wins. Tough to repeat here, isn't it? Very tough. And you've got a, a very busy slate of drives on Saturday night. 
I'm hoping they uh, go as well as they are. Well, we've got uh, just a minute left in the uh, show. Uh, what's your opinion uh, about uh, uh, drivers and uh, how they adapt to a horse uh, uh, cold? You, you haven't driven the horse before. How do you do that? Well, I think basically you got to go a little bit on what the trainer tells you about the individual and uh, on your score, how he feels, and go by the program on the way he looks. All right. Well, you've done well for yourself doing that, and, and of course, uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you here out on the track and in the winner's circle at the Big M. Thank Best you, of luck. Ted. Thanks a lot Thank to you. Richard Silverman. And uh, we want to remind you that uh, we've got another edition of Track Talk Live at the Big M, our interactive call-in show next Friday at 6.30 right here on CNA. And don't miss the greatest night of harness racing. It's the Meadowlands Pace, Saturday, July 14th, and the inside track here, midnight on...